sermon's entitled, Truly Saved Versus the Pretender. And the outcome will shock people. Let me open with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for allowing me to preach this sermon and to explain what your word clearly says. Let's pray that you allow me to um, just, just go over your word here and to, uh, to not miss the beat on what I'm, what I'm trying to say here. I saw this in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans chapter 3. It reads... We're going to look at these verses, and then we're going to come back, and I'm going to go over this scenario. Look at verse 9. What then are we better than they? No, and no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Now, look at verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. We're going to stop right there. Now, here's the scenario. <clears throat> You have two people. You have a truly saved person, Bob, supposedly, and then you have the pretender, Jim. Now, most people think if you're truly saved, you're going to live a pretty good, moral, obedient life. And then a person who's living in constant sin, worldliness, they're just living like the devil, those are the fakes, those are the pretenders. But the re in reality, it's, it's, usually the, it's usually the other way around. Okay, you got truly saved, okay, Bob. Bob lives a godly, moral, obedient life. You got the pretender Jim, who lives in um, constant sin, worldliness, and like the devil. Okay, now let's take let's swap the titles. Now let's just say that Bob is the pretender, and that Jim is truly saved. Now once again, Bob lives a godly, moral, obedient life. Jim lives in constant sin, worldliness, and like the devil. Now I believe Bob is the pretender, and Jim is the one who's truly saved. Why? Bob was trusting in his good life to get him to heaven, and thus saw no need for God's grace. He was the pretender who was lost. Bill knew that he couldn't stop sinning, so he trusted God's grace due to his wickedness. He was the truly saved. Bob is in hell. Why? Because he trusted in his good life and not in Christ. Bill will, is in heaven. And this, is, this is at the end of it all. Bill is in heaven now. Why? Because he trusted in Christ and his wondrous grace. Conclusion, both were sinners and needed God's grace, because for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay, both were sinners, both Bill and Bob were sinners. Only Bill understood this. Only Bill understood that he needed, he needed God's grace, and Jesus Christ paid for his salvation. And see, the thing is, why is Bob in hell? Because Bob never saw his need for grace. He thought he kept thinking. He kept thinking to himself, "I don't need grace. I'm pretty good. I obey the commandments. I live a godly, moral life. So I'm I'm the one going to heaven." When in reality, they both needed grace. It doesn't matter if you're Bill or Bob, because you're a sinner. So I'm going to read this verse again. What then are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Okay, Bob might have been the might have been the Jew. Bill might have been the Gentile. Although Bob thought he lived a pretty good life, pretty obedient and moral, and then Bill lived in perpetual sin. Either way, they both needed they both were sinners. Neither one is good enough. You know, Bob needed God's grace just like Bill did, but Bill was the only one who accepted it because Bill understood he couldn't he was no good. So therefore, the tr the, the troop the truly saved was was Bill. The one who's living in living in all the sin, the pretender was Bob, and most people don't like that. In most people's eyes and minds, it's the other way around. <clears throat> this is not what the Bible teaches, though. That's all I have. Let me close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for allowing me to preach this sermon. It explains our need for grace. I don't care who you are. Nobody's good enough to get to heaven on their own. And it doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how bad you are. If you're saved by grace, you're saved by grace. Period. Keep us safe and keep us real. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.